Chinese exploration of outer space didn't end with the accomplishment it had in 2003 when it managed to become the third nation to independently send humans into orbit. Rather, it marked just a beginning for a space exploration journey. China has sent over 14 humans into space through this whole time. But have you ever wondered what it's like to live and work in space? Yes, these people are truly special at what they do, but at the end of the day, they're regular people. China has trained its astronauts so strategically that they are capable of executing high-level missions. So, how does life go on inside China's space station? And what is China planning to do from its space station? Let's find out in today's episode of The Royalist. When you're revolving around the planet at about 17,000 miles per hour, standard human notions of day and night start to look pretty silly. In a normal 24-hour stretch, a typical Chinese astronaut will see the sun rise and set 16 times in total. Human bodies didn't evolve that way, so a regular 24-hour Earth day is maintained up there, if nothing else to prevent the crew descending into a grim spiral of permanent crippling jet lag. The Chinese have specifically coined a term for their astronauts in the space station, naming them Tychonauts, from the Chinese word for space, Tycho, and the Greek word for sailor. And international media is also widely using this name for Chinese astronauts. As Tychonauts will be staying for a long time in space, there has been a lot of effort made to make the space station comfy and cozy. The size of the core module of the space station is about 50 cubic meters, Inside it, there are three separate bedrooms and one bathroom for their use. It also comprises two lab capsules. The living space is about 110 cubic meters. Also, there are other zones that have been set up for astronauts for work, sanitation, dining, healthcare, and exercise. Besides, these all are fully covered by Wi-Fi. There have been more than 120 dishes prepared for the astronauts that are on the mission such as Kung Pao Chicken and Yusheng Shredded Pork. As taking a bath in zero-gravity environment is almost impossible, the astronauts can use a spray gun before wiping themselves clean. The list doesn't just end there. There is a space gym in the core module, equipped with various workout equipment for the astronauts to work out. The Tychonauts all have a handheld terminal connected to an app to switch cabin lighting between work, sleep, and exercise modes. Whereas, to overcome the barrier of communication when out in orbit, the Tychonauts use bone conduction headphones for communication with each other and the command center. Consideration has also been given for them getting homesick, and a private voice channel has been reserved for them to call their families and friends on Earth. The Tychonauts are to stay in space for about three months for the construction and development of the space station and to conduct various other tasks. On a more personalized scale, if we get to have a more deeper look into the lives of the Chinese astronauts, they don't even have to worry about having their laundry done there as well. Working suits can perhaps be put one or more than a month without having to worry about getting them washed. But in case anything comes out of the human body and gets in contact with the water, it is likely to contaminate the whole of it. Over the space station, the user interface of the system is all in Chinese, including the layout diagram, control console, and the robotic arm. It's expected the space station will host multiple experiments from both China and other countries, with China seeking to enhance its capacity for scientific and technological innovation. When venturing out, the robotic space arm would be used to assist astronauts during spacewalks. Despite refusal from NASA for any collaboration due to a bill passed by the U.S. government in 2011 limiting any cooperation with the Chinese or Chinese-owned companies, China has managed to arrange for the construction of a space station in low Earth orbit. This space station is estimated to be above the surface of the Earth between 340 and 450 kilometers with a mass of 80 to 100 tons. It will be able to see Tain Gong from Earth much as it is occasionally possible to see the International Space Station. Space Station Tiang Gung will circle the Earth at an altitude of between 221 and 280 miles, 340 and 450 kilometers, above the surface, and between 43 degrees north and south latitude, 
and it is expected to be visible in the sky for at least 10 years. The space station is to be the successor of Taingong-1 Space Lab 2011 and Taingong-2 Space Lab 2016. Taingong is the space station in low Earth orbit that is being built by the Chinese Manned Space Agency, CMSA, with funding from the Chinese government. China launched Tianhe, the first of three modules that will make up the orbiting space station, in May 2021, and the government hopes to complete construction of the station by the end of 2022. CMSA aims to retain three astronauts on Taingong for at least a decade, allowing them to study and work on the planet. Many experiments from both China and other nations will be carried out aboard the space station. Taingong, which translates as heavenly place, will be comprised of Tianhe, which will serve as the primary habitat for astronauts, as well as Mengxian and Wenxian, which will serve as experiment modules and are both scheduled to launch in 2022. It's planned that two crews of three astronauts will be launched from Zhiquan in the Gobi Desert, while a cargo spacecraft told Tianzhu will launch from Wenchang on the Chinese island of Hainan to deliver supplies and fuel to the space station. The Shenzhou spacecraft is scheduled to launch from Zhuquan in the Gobi Desert. In comparison to the International Space Station, Tiangong will be much smaller, consisting of just three modules as opposed to the ISS's 16 modules. It will also be lighter than the International Space Station, which now weighs around 400 tons with the recent installation of Russia's Nauka module. Tianhe is far bigger and heavier than the Taingong 1 and 2 test space laboratories that China launched in the previous decade, weighing in at roughly three times the amount. The Tianhe module, which is 54 feet, 16.6 meters in length, was launched with a docking hub that will let it accommodate the Shenzhou and Chengzhou spacecraft, as well as the two subsequent experiment modules when they arrive. A huge robotic arm will aid astronauts during spacewalks by positioning the Mengshan and Wenshan modules and assisting them with other tasks. Tianhe is equipped with regenerative life support, which allows humans to remain in orbit for extended periods of time. In order to complete Tiangong, China estimates that 11 launches will be required. There have been no problems with the first three launches, the Tianhe, the Tanju-2, and the Shenzhou-12, this far. When compared to Tiangong-1, which was only 15 cubic meters, the present aerospace project under development is to be spacious enough with a central module of 50 cubic meters having three separate bedrooms and one bathroom. Also, efforts have been made to make the place as livable as could be made possible, as the crew members are to stay there for longer periods this time. When combined with the lab capsules, the living space is estimated to be around 110 cubic meters. The first three crewed trips, Shenzhou 12, 13, and 14, would be dedicated to the building of the space station. In 2023, a series of operating phase missions with a duration of six months each will be launched. Crew members will conduct experiments in a variety of fields, including astronomy, space medicine and life sciences, biotechnology, microgravity combustion and fluid physics, and space technologies. Tiangong will also serve as a temporary home for six astronauts as their crews change shifts. In addition, Tiangong is expected to host foreign astronauts in the near future. According to the European Space Agency, astronauts Samantha Cristoforetti and Matthias Maurer trained with their Chinese counterparts in 2017, marking a small step toward a possible future visit to the Chinese space station. A number of nations, notably those participating in China's Belt and Road program, may send astronauts to Tiangong. Russia is also contemplating sending cosmonauts to the facility. China is attempting to come up with other means of supplying Tiangong with fuel. During the first week of January 2021, the China Manned Space Agency issued an invitation to submit plans for low-cost, dependable supply flights to Tiangong. Unlike NASA's private resupply service contracts, which gave possibilities to SpaceX, this request was available to all commercial entities. To sum everything up, efforts have been made by the Chinese to arrange for every possible means of comfort for the astronauts who are to be out there in outer space on a mission, be they native Chinese or any foreign delegation. 
Unlike the International Space Station, Chinese haven't restricted any countries to enter their space station or not to have access to their premises. The Chinese astronauts have been planned to deliver science lessons from outer space to students directly, with China's Shenzhou-13 astronauts presenting a science lesson live from the orbiting Tiangong space station. The lecture will be part of a series referred to as Tiangong Class, which takes its name from the Chinese space station, which literally translates as heavenly place. China hopes to use its new orbital outpost to inspire interest in space and science both domestically and internationally and to gain international prestige in the process. Tiangong has been designed to facilitate work while paying due concern for the facilitation of the astronauts undertaking the research projects and experiments that are planned for now and those that are yet to come by. The present space station under development is perhaps going to a place many might dream of, and it is perhaps going to be the picture of what is actually named as Tiangong, the heavenly place.